Welcome back, life science learners. Guys, we've been looking at revising a very important concept or property in an exam, the writing of an essay. It's crucial that you understand how to write an essay. We've just looked at how to write an essay. We've looked at an example. We discussed the importance of reading that essay carefully. We then said it was important for us to be able to then unpack the different concepts. We then looked at planning, and a plan was an overview of the different aspects of that essay. Put that down. We then went on to saying, well, now put your thoughts together and synthesize that. Now we've done all of that. Let's see if we can apply that to a few questions. So what I've done is I've got a few questions, and we're going to attempt to read through these questions, do an overview of planning, and see how we can construct an essay together. I trust that you will take down these topics and try and attempt writing these essays once you've revised the section. So let's look at our first topic, try and unpack exactly how to look at writing this essay. So the first question, okay? Describe the structure of RNA in a cell and the involvement of different types of RNA in protein synthesis. Again, the content is 17 marks, the synthesis is 3 marks, and that's 20 marks. Before we get into the essay, guys, often I get learners asking me, so, but how much of time do we need to spend on writing an essay? And guys, essentially, if you go back and look at the total of marks that are allocated to any of these papers, it's often a minute and a half per mark. So, so guys, more or less, you need to keep approximately around 30 minutes to be able to plan as well as write this essay. So as I said, it's important that we read the topic, and I've read that once, I'm going to read that a second time so that I have a clear understanding of the different aspects so that we can unpack that in the essay. So the first word is describe, guys. So that's a description, so we've got to describe. So it's important that we understand what describe means. The structure of RNA. So we've got to describe RNA structure. I, I need you guys to note how we unpack this topic. So that's the first component in a cell and the involvement of the different types of RNA. So we then got to describe the involvement of different types. So it's how different RNA is used in protein synthesis. So we've got to look at the use of different RNA in protein synthesis. So guys, I think this is quite an easy topic because it's quite straightforward. There are a few aspects that were easy to unpack from the topic. And I know that for many of you, protein synthesis is not easy, but it's the ability for us to be able to unpack protein synthesis and then explain that in an essay. So now that we've read the topic, we've identified the different aspects Let's look at the next step. So again, as I mentioned, in the first aspect, we've got to be able to very quickly refer to the first aspect. So if I go to the concept here, the structure of RNA, guys. So guys, important for us to recollect our knowledge on the structure of RNA. Remember that we've got essentially DNA, which we've looked at its structure and the types. Now we're looking at RNA and its structure. So you've got to now go through essentially putting together a concept map of just the structure of, D of RNA. So remember that RNA is single-stranded, so you must note that in your planning. It's made up of your nucleotides. Again, it's important to be able to say your A, G, U, and C nucleotides. We've got to say that RNA has these sugars, which we call the ribosugars. It has the phosphate. And if it helps for you to be able to draw this little molecule that shows you that, it does help, guys. And that helps you to, again, get the context of what you've studied and put that into, again, your planning, guys. This is all in the planning. Include the fact that it has nitrogenous bases, which I mentioned, are your adenine, guanine, uracil, and cytosine. Mention the fact that you've got the phosphate group that make up these, that are attached to the ribose sugar here. Mentioned that the bases are arranged on mRNA in what we refer to as our base triplets, and these are called codons. We also mentioned that on the tRNA, guys, that they are anticodons, and we refer to those, so the concept of being able to include 
the anticodons there. We also need to discuss the shape of the tRNA, discuss how its structure is, that it's the point of amino acid attachment being there. So what we've done in this part of the aspect of the essay is being able to describe the structure of the RNA as well as the different types of RNA. And as a quick recollection, we've got three types of RNA, guys. We've got mRNA, we've got tRNA, and finally, we have a very important RNA, which we often refer to as ribosome, but that's the rRNA. So those are the three different types of RNA that you must be able to elaborate on their structure. And finally, the, the latter part of the question is describe the role of these RNAs in protein synthesis. And this would require that you now unpack protein synthesis in two processes. Remember that in protein synthesis, we have the first step that is transcription, okay? And the second process that occurs is translation. So guys, this helps me to get my thinking around transcription. I've now got to illustrate the process of transcription. I must mention the fact that mRNA is involved. I must discuss how that is produced, the process of transcription, how the rRNA or the ribosome and the tRNA collectively read the mRNA using the, using the building blocks which we refer to as amino acids, make what we call proteins. So that description needs to take place. Let's try and unpack possibly how the involvement of these RNAs take place in protein synthesis. We recollect that mRNA forms during transcription. We know that this process is called coding the message from DNA. We describe that the mRNA is produced in the nucleus it then leaves the nucleus to the nuclear pores, and then it moves out into the ribosome. And that process that we've just described now is called transcription. It then moves into translation, where we see the mRNA, which is now that strand containing codons, as we mentioned that. We also mentioned the concept of the tRNA bringing in the amino acids, which we often illustrate using that. The tRNA then brings in the required amino acids. We talk about the bases on the tRNA and the bases on the mRNA forming the codon and the anticodon bonding. The amino acids then come in and then they held together what we refer to as with peptide bonds, forming eventually a polypeptide chain. And that describes essentially the process of protein synthesis. Guys, these essays are marked very systematically using what we refer to as a rubric. It's important that you understand how this rubric is used. Essentially, it will help you to be able to think cl clinically around how to structure your essay together. So let's look at the rubric for this particular essay. So there are relevance, logical sequencing, and the comprehensiveness. So that, those three terms, relevance, so what you've written in this essay was relevant to the aspect. So we needed to discuss the types of RNA, the structure of RNA, and the use of those different types of RNA in protein synthesis. So has the information that you provided relevant to the topic? So you cannot fill space in your essay because you want to take up a lot of paper and impress the reader by filling up pages. That's obviously going to get, into, get you into trouble if that information is not relevant. The second part of it is that there has to be a logical sequence. As with the process of protein synthesis, we need to logically and describe how transcription takes place, the process and how the mRNA is produced. And so that refers to the logical layout of cause and effect. So we talk about logical cause and effect. So we say this has to happen first followed by that. And in the process of protein synthesis, the sequence is very important. And finally, was this essay comprehensive? Did you cover all aspects required and has they been sufficiently addressed? Further to this, in this essay, the information 
has to include the structure, the involvement of the different types of RNA, and that there's no irrelevant information. And that gives you the one mark for the synthesis. The second mark would be all the information regarding the structure of RNA, involvement of it in the different types of RNA is given in a logical manner. Yes, you've done that, the second mark for synthesis. And finally, we're looking at the third mark for how comprehensive was your answer in that you had at least six to nine of the facts required for the first aspect of structure of RNA and the types of RNA, and then at least five to eight of the facts required for the process of protein synthesis where you described transcription and translation. So guys, as you see, this essay can be very, very clinical in the way you write it. It's important that you're able to think logically, have a, keep a cool head, and synthesize that information knowing that you have all the content that you've prepared. Let's try another essay. The next essay question. Using genetically modified organisms as a source of food is supported by some people and rejected by others. So that's the statement that has been given. It's important to read that once more. Again, we know that the concept here is that genetically modified organisms as a source of food has been supported by some individuals and rejected by others. So we're seeing here that there's a concept that's being supported and rejected. Good to get that clearly understood early on. The next part, this is the instruction to that. So there's a statement that has been given. Here's the instruction. Explain six advantages. Focus on the concept of the number six. Advantages, guys, of using genetically modified organisms as a source of food and give four disadvantages of using genetically modified organisms as a source of food. So guys, when we unpack this essay, again, the context of genetically modified food is a controversial concept. This essay says that some individuals support them and others are against them. I think if we were to very quickly kind of look at this, you've got to give six facts that are for, and you've got to give four facts that are against the use. Now guys, remember that this is a 17 mark essay, and you've got to have that at the back of your head, and you've got to have the synthesis concept in your, in your planning. It's important that in this essay, we look at what is needed to be able to string together six facts that are supporting four, and again, four facts that are going against the use. It's important that you have a thorough understanding of the pros and cons of concepts such as genetically modified food, the advantages of them, the disadvantages of them, etc. So there are many topics that we can. So it's important that at this point, as we wrap the segment up, that we often have learners trying to prepare an essay before they write an exam. Unfortunately, you cannot really predict an essay topic, and that's poor planning. I would rather suggest that you spend some time looking at various aspects and seeing how they interconnected. And that's essentially what I've done here. In this slide, I've gone through and I've looked at how, in the concept of life sciences, how different concepts can be linked together. And that's essentially, as I wrap the segment up, I'd like to emphasize that fact, is that in this little blurb that I've put up there, I've showed you that there are various factors that can be interconnected. And that's what I'd like to spend a minute wrapping up the segment. So we know that in meiosis, we can discuss the process, the significance of pro the process of meiosis, as well as how it produces variation. So if you were preparing on concepts around meiosis, know the process, know how it occurs, and give a sense of what happens that produces variation and its importance. The next area is when we look at is DNA and how mutations occur. We know that mutations occur at a gene level as well as at a chromosomal level. Know some examples of gene mutations like sickle cell anemia. Know the way in which gene mutations occur. So we talk about deletion, insertion, substitution. We also know that there are chromosomal mutations. So again, how do these occur? So non-disjunction during meiosis. And talk about some examples. So in terms of Down syndrome, Kleinfelter, Turner syndrome. So these are, again, know how they occur, the effects and examples of them. Again, a possible subtopic in an essay. 
The next factor would be how DNA fingerprinting, profiling, or karyotypes are used in being able to pick up genetic abnormalities, DNA fingerprinting, as well as looking at paternity. So again, the concepts of karyotypes, fingerprints, pedigree charts are important in being able to identify abnormalities, look at inheritance of a specific characteristic. So again, different tools used. The concept of genetic engineering, as you see, has various processes as well as advantages and disadvantages. Know that well. And finally, know some genetic disorders such as Down syndrome, albinism, sickle cell anemia, color blindness, hemophilia, muscular dystrophy. Uh, these are important because they often would ask you to describe a few genetic disorders, explain some symptoms of them. And I would encourage you to, re to have a few of these in your notes. These are some of the common ones, but they're often relevant to different sections. Finally, the genetics, as I often emphasize, in genetics there's a whole lot of terms that are important, and these are fundamental for you to be able to understand concepts and construct an essay. Guys, we've looked at how to plan an essay, we've looked at how to read through an essay. It's important that you take these and apply these and practice these. Try a few essays, and I hope that you've enjoyed the lesson. See you soon. Have a bye lecker day. Cheers.